Our, our next talk is uh, um, by uh, Radhika Hiranaya, um, who I believe is a, a recent uh, PhD graduate. Graduate, uh, congratulations! Um, and she'll be talking to us about uh, open flow-based traffic engineering for mobile devices. Uh, thank you, Ben, for the introduction. <clears throat> uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to be presenting here uh, the work I did towards my doctoral dissertation, Open Flow Based uh, Traffic Engineering for Mobile Devices. I'm really excited to speak here in the Open vSwitch conference. Uh, uh, and I am just recently graduated with PhD from Wichita State University, uh, which is located in Kansas. Um, and uh, I'm currently looking for full-time opportunities. To start off with, uh, uh, let's talk about what are the challenges we are facing right now is <clears throat> the dynamic management network connectivity. Uh, we all use mobile devices, laptops, iPads, iPhones, everything. And there are a lot of activities going on. And it introduces uh, complexity in the network. Um, so and this, for all the constituents, and I have considered three, that is service provider, enterprise, and users. <clears throat> Talking about the service provider here, um, they, are very, they are challenged to provide network connectivity all the way from core to the mobile device. And they have to constantly improve bandwidth utilization. They have to provide better bandwidth utilization and secure and monetize peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer traffic. So how about the enterprise? They are always uh, need to secure and access, uh, control data access all the time. And uh, it's, it's very challenging for the enterprise users uh, because uh, we have everybody brings by, bring your own device, they encourage, and the mobile devices they provide. So they are always challenged for that. And whereas users, <clears throat> we want more flexibility. We want to access uh, devices. We want faster access of user services all the time. So we, we are demanding about flexibility. So having said that, <clears throat> so I, to employ for the solution, you know, for, to provide a solution for the, that I employed uh, network traffic engineering uh, from all the, from core to the mobile device, to the access device. Uh, this provides uh, some interesting scenarios. Uh, we can envision them. Uh, one would be um, instead of using a multicast video streaming, how about if we program through program the flow flow path itself, okay, if, to provide easy access all the way to core to the mobile device. That is one. The, the second one, if we envision like you know for the if there are two corporate users who wants to use and share the data, uh, file sharing, uh, right, and then they are offsite, and uh, so they call one person calls the IT and he say, hey, we want to share the data, this presentation, and <clears throat> what the IT corporate guy does is he programs the and uh, program he enables the programmability such that they can share the data the file sharing uh, through Bluetooth. And now, but if we have the users itself, if we have network flexibility, say while using, we, are, we do a Skype call, what call. Uh, so <clears throat> what if by default it goes through Wi-Fi right now? What if we had an option of choosing either Wi-Fi or let it go through uh, LTE or 3G or 4G or anything? What if we have those options? So here, having said that, OK, we are all thinking about it. That would be great if we have all these things. So I'm going to talk about how I try, attempted to try to solve these uh, with, in my research. So how did I do it? it? I just created, I developed an architectural model. And I introduced open flow based programmable switch on the device itself. 
on the device that's located. And it can be programmed mutually in, in a mutually exclusive way by service providers, enterprises, and users. And to support that, I adopted two mathematical techniques to model the flow movements and the controller assignments. So having said that, I was starting off with introducing programmable switch on the open flow based programmable switch on the device itself. What, what I have done is this is the architectural picture. So we can hide radios on the one side here and the applications on the port side. And I introduced a bridge here so that it can use the system defined network preferences. So here with this kind of an architecture, the user will have an option to select either maybe Wi-Fi or any of these. He will get an option. Or he might use this bridge to use the system-defined network preferences. So and I used this open flow switch, and it was in conformance with the open flow switch specification standards. Now, now, the switch is already there on the data plane. Now we need to program it. How do we program it? Controllers. So I used controllers I represented service provider, enterprise, and users, like three controllers, and then represented as control plane. And then they run in equal mode, and these controllers manage on the flows, flow tables. Um, and they are predefined with, by our out of band agreement. And they also follow the standard pipeline processing. So, oh, sorry. Here, this controllers, controller one, two, three, anybody, they can be in any order. So what, what I've done is here, the controllers will have specific flow tables, multiple tables, and they will be duplicated. And the contents in these flow tables are identical, except for the last go-to table entry. For example, if a packet comes in, depending on the packet, if a packet comes in, and controller two gets to act on it first. So it has flow table two, and maybe, let's say, flow table n itself. And these flows are identical, except for the go-to table entry. Why then, if controller one gets to act on it, so then it will be, uh, you know, this, this arrangement is basically to follow the pipeline order because all packets can go only in the forward direction. And for that, uh, this controller assignment with the flow tables, I, we, I used a mathematical model which I developed. <clears throat> so as I said, there were two techniques, two mathematical techniques. First is using a finite state Markov chain. So we all, we all know that the packet comes in, it has to go in an order with one flow table to another flow table. There are a lot of actions happening just in the data plane itself. So the flow movements across the flow tables in the data plane are were modeled using finite state Markov chain. And the flow movement from one, ta one table to another is given by this transition probability matrix located on the bottom right, where I is the initial state and J is the final state. And now the movement move from the current state to the next state. What do I mean by that is the flow table one, say considering your flow, three flow tables, one, two, and three. So if the flow packet moves from flow table one to flow table two, it can move only in the one direction, that is the right arrow here, and or that is saying that it is moving from current state to the next state, or it can say stay in the same state, which is the looping here. And this whole, uh, the steady state diagram here is represented on this bottom left here. And various trials were simulated using our statistical software package. 
And now relating to the controller assignment. So now depending on the packet enters, either a controller one, a service provider gets to act first, or the user gets to act first. So not specifying them, saying that there might be 10 controllers, one controller may act, or maybe three controller may act first, and then they get to predefine what are, like, you know, who gets to act on the next packet. And that's why I have duplicated the multiple tables, um, flow tables, so that it can go to the go-to stage. Uh, the last entry would be the go-to entry, would be, which, would be the, which would be different. So for that, uh, you have to model. I used permutation algorithm for the order of arrangement of these controllers. Having said that, now the flow tables, how many, for these many controllers, you need to have certain number of flow table association. For that, I came up with, sorry, I came up with this formula here, n into n minus 1 plus 1 for n greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to 1, where n is the number of controllers. So having, that was my mathematical uh, approach to test the validity of the uh, architectural model itself. This is the test bed scenario where I used a bunch of uh, com combination of laptops and open flow switches uh, to test. And uh, what I, uh, I used a laptop uh, as a mobile device. And, uh, and I installed a link open flow software switch from flow, flow, flow forwarding arc um, to act as a mobile, act as an open flow switch, programmable open flow switch. And then now uh, we need controllers. So I ran a controller user con uh, on the locally on the laptop to suggest to represent the user controller. Uh, next, to test the programmability part, uh, I, um, on the WAN side, you know, uh, there were two interfaces, Wi-Fi and wired. And the two, um, uh, so they were on the WAN side. And um, I, uh, then there was a YouTube MP4 video streaming on the other side. So what I did was I wrote a small program so that when you run that, the your application it gets you, you get an option to choose which application to use which port to use basically uh, and then as soon as it's selected depending on the selection the flows were installed on the switch and um, uh, then the traffic was uh, uh, the, it was programmed and the traffic started processing so you can use openv switch to but i didn't get to test on it uh, I just found whichever was suitable, easy. So I, I just found it and then I just, I didn't go digging. Uh, I, just, I just did that. But yes, you can do with OpenV switch too. Uh, this is general open, open flow switch and open flow controller, this concept. Uh, you can use and try it out. And I'm also eager, I'm also in process of, um, you know, experimenting in that. Um, so. Do you have any questions? I think I present. Oh my God, did I do it terrible? Okay. Um, my name is Vikram yeah. from Convoy Technologies. So, so you're talking basically about optimizing using multiple radios here. Uh, using multiple radios and the switch, right, to see what? I am not doing any optimization using different radios or anything. It's only traffic engineering, <laughs> how you can program, and then you'll get an option, and then you can use it. This is yes. just a concept. Yes. It's a method which I have proposed. Yes. So, so this traffic engineering is happening at the switch level, basically, you are doing it. Yes. There, is, there are things which are done being done in user space uh, and even, like, in stack by companies like Apple, right, multipath, TCP. Have you looked at those, how they compare with traffic engineering at this level? That's actually a good <laughs> question. I haven't done a lot of research, like, you know, going through that. But the only main 
focus was to test how to use that the open flow uh, and uh, how does it work uh, because i found it very interesting because this is a new developing area but yes uh, that is a very interesting thing which i have considered but i haven't got a chance to go really and check so uh, that is that is my in my to do list right now Samuel from Broadcom. I just have a clarification question. You initially mentioned that every device is running open flow switch, but then I think I saw later on you were talking about open flow controller. Can you clarify where the controller is running and what intelligence you have on each mobile device? Okay. Um, I have programmed uh, the open flow switch on a laptop. And I have assumed that there is a service provider controller, enterprise, and a user locally running. So what I did was I used a bunch of laptops. Uh, uh, locally, there was a switch and a controller running uh, that was user. And then I used another two laptops as a controller for service provider and uh, enterprise. And then I programmed using flows. Uh, did I answer your question? So, so it was just for convenience, or uh, was it architecturally uh, made that decision that you want to have the controller run on laptop? Actually, it was the resources. I okay. didn't have enough resources, <laughs> so that is why I could do that uh, demonstration in my school. Um, so, Radhika, the question I have is, uh, I'm trying to understand, um, so you have a, a statistical model, right? And you're sure. using a, some probability distribution for moving, uh, for the movement. So what were the triggers to have a statistical modeling for that? That's a good question, actually. Uh, in my scenario, see, the, generally in the open flow switch, um, there's a flow tables. Just imagine there are one, two, three, four flow tables. So when a packet comes in, it can go to flow table one, flow table two, flow table three. If flow table, if the packet goes to flow table one, it can go to flow table 10, but it cannot come back to flow table two. So that is why I came up with this statistical model, depending on the, on the constituent factors that it can move only forward. So that's why I came up with this steady state, and it's a conditional probability, conditional transition probability using Markov chain. What was the intent? What is it that we're trying to? I'm intent? trying to study how the flow movement happens in the switch. Uh, we, we have time for more questions if anybody has one. Hi, uh, Peter Fall, in one corporation. Um, how are you composing the rules between the different controllers? I mean, suppose they have contradictory um, policies um, that are ir irreconcilable if they don't know about each other. Exactly. So, uh, I, as I mentioned, it uses uh, the, uh, I've confirmed it with the open flow switch specification. In the specification, it says that the switch uh, does not do resource, uh, resource sharing and arbitration. That is one. And the controllers are in mutually programmed in mutually exclusive way. Means that they are simultaneous. They do not know of each other's existence. Only the switch knows that they exist. And they're all in equal role. Any, any controller can, uh, any, anybody, when the packet comes in, controller one or controller two or controller three can act on it. So that is why I have assumed, I mean, there are, this, I have taken the switch Con uh, specification factors, like the, it doesn't do resource sharing and arbitration, and it, uh, the multiple controllers it must follow equal role and they are mutually exclusive way. They are programmed in mutually exclusive way. So if a controller three like gets to act on, so the flow tables are assigned in such a way that the order, like three, two, one, maybe, 
If the packet moves from controller 3 to 1, it follows that pattern. There's a follow-up question. Did you look at um, sort of functional languages like frenetic as an alternative to composing the, the rules? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, this was way before frenetic arithmetic. Uh, we still have time for questions if uh, if there are any more. All right, let's thank the speaker. Thank you very much.